Hello doctors, Dr. Ido Levy here from PediatricAligners.com and today it is my honor to talk to you about space, inspired by a story that happened yesterday in my office. So yesterday would have been August 5th, 2025 and the morning started with this patient arriving in my office. Of course, we here at PediatricAligners.com, when we see this kind of severe crowding, we are happy that we have an aligner that does not discriminate between partially erupted teeth, deciduous teeth, no teeth at all, and simply gives us control around the arch to form the arches, to develop the arches in the vertical, transverse, as well as sagittal direction in order to create space for these teeth and have the teeth erupt very, very easily in a healthy fashion in a way that is less prone to relapse simply because we're not allowing the teeth to stay in the bone crooked. We're not allowing them to erupt crooked. We're just trying to make lanes and open up the entire area proactively to create space. However, what happened yesterday was this particular patient was related to a lot of pediatric dentists and orthodontists. And so the case ended up within the same day on a chat that I happened to be on of pediatric dentists and orthodontists. And I got to see how my colleagues would treat my case. And I saw that most of the colleagues took the space that this case gives for granted. They were already resigned to the fact that they were not going to gain any space around the arch. They were looking for space for incisors by the extraction of the deciduous canines. And then they were going to wait for the rest of the incisors to erupt into that space and then place what is called a two by four here. Well, here we have actually a space maintainer. So this highlights the point, right? That many doctors are resigned. They are conceding that this is the space they have. And what we want to do in our best day, in our best case scenario, is maintain said space. Well, we here at pediatricaligners.com are not looking to maintain space. We are looking to proactively gain space. And actually, particularly in the anterior region where we see this dome being so narrow, by widening this dome, we create lanes of eruption for the central incisors, lateral incisors, and yes, ultimately the canines. Ever since we started doing this in the summer of 2020, we have not had a single canine impaction in over 3,000 cases. So we see this anterior region as the crown jewel of what we do, developing this with an aligner that does so with exquisite precision. Now, a two by four, mind you, is placing some sort of force. Of course, you can't always put a two by four. You need two molars and four incisors to do two by four by definition. And even then, you're not touching the sides over here where the premolars and the canines are. With our aligners, we're actually able to establish space by the premolars and canines where it is actually very important to generate arch development. And so as we see the panoramic x-ray over here, we see that perhaps space was maintained for this premolar, but we needed more than space maintenance. We need space gaining. Look at the traffic jam in the anterior. That is our focus today. Why do other doctors concede the space? Why do they not want to get proactively into this kind of case with aligners? I believe it's because they associate what they call early treatment with this stuff, which is not fun for the patient, not fun for the doctors, not efficient in the office, but these are limited interceptive appliances. Certainly if you need to have skeletal expansion in the posterior, certainly do that. But when it comes to gaining space in the anterior, development in the anterior in particular, these appliances do not accomplish that. However, when we have pediatric aligners, we can accomplish that with ease. So you have a case like this, and again, you see the ball here, all balled up and scrunched up. Sometimes the teeth won't even erupt. And yet that doesn't matter. When you have an aligner, you can guide the teeth into place and develop a nice arch form. This is true of the maxillary as well as the mandibular. We're not looking to extract primary canines and diminish arch length. We're looking to increase arch length and fit the teeth into place. We liken it to taking the narrow domes of Sanarini and widening it like the super dome. When we do that, we achieve so much as far as allowing the teeth to come in in a very healthy fashion. So when you have a beautiful patient like this. This is the patient I just showed you before where the anterior is developed. Where are you putting a two by four here? So all of those doctors that are waiting for space, an RPE won't generate any resolution here. A two by four won't generate any resolution here. But if you put aligners, you can actually get the teeth just like any other case to develop in that arch form. Similarly over here, you can see this is not happening with an RPE. The RPE perhaps again will have transverse expansion in the posterior. But this anterior segment, you see how this narrow area, where are you placing the room for the canines here? And yet when you have an aligner that can create space, you're generating a wider arch form all around. Now, of course, 
there are certain cases where you certainly would never be able to do a two by four by definition to do a two by four you need two in the back and four in the front well here we have a half in the back nothing in the front so this would be a half by none uh technically and you see this v-shaped arch and so some doctors are surprised to see that we would get into this kind of case but this is not like using a lip bumper or a holly with a finger spring. This is a real appliance that generates, look at this beautiful arch form. I am convinced that this upper right lateral erupted, albeit palatally, only because we started early with the arch form. And now that traffic jam that you see on a radiograph, it's starting to unravel and those teeth are starting to erupt. So we don't even need two or four. We get in as soon as we see the constriction anteriorly. So here, right? Over half a year of treatment, we're already seeing the development of trying to bring in the teeth into place. As fate would have it, yesterday, like I said, it was August 5th, 2025. And so this case came to actually illustrate my point. You have this little mound, anterior mound, and jumble of teeth. You could see a little bit of the incisor. The central's coming in crooked. The molars are erupted. And I thought already in December, it is time to start developing this arch. And sure enough, six months later, or in this case, I guess, eight or 10 months later, we're already seeing the incisors are in place. They are aligned. The arch, notice in the canine region, how much arch development we got. How did we get that arch development? By moving the deciduous teeth and creating a rim, an alveolar rim into which these adult teeth that are unraveled will now erupt and bring the dense bone with them. What is the justification for allowing the bone to get dense and for the teeth to remain stuck in this ball of traffic. What is the justification of doing that when today we can actually unravel it and start getting the teeth erupt in the right place? This is not the word association that people actually usually typically associate with early treatment. This is not a limited treatment. This is a very comprehensive beginning to a very profoundly balanced treatment. And so this case now, looking at again, looks very much like the case that I just showed you. Right? There happen to be already molars here, but we're not looking to maintain space. We are looking to gain space. We're looking to develop the arch. This is a early case, right? So it's the summer of 2020 when I actually started. Um, I'll get out of Anwar's teeth way. Anwar had beautiful uh, teeth within 10 months, right? That's when we got in. That's when the laterals erupted. That's when we took his jumbled mess and started cleaning it up such that by two years later, when he was in very active transitional dentition, they were coming into a, a fully formed alveolar arch. What actually frustrates me is that for 16 years after I graduated NYU Orthodontics in 2003, I was taking Anwar at, at an eight-year-old and sending him home because I can't even put a two by four there until he arrived back in 2023, a few years later. Well, at that point, the bone is still in the old configuration. And so my point is when the bone is in the old configuration, you would have had a jumbled crooked mess of teeth trying to erupt into that configuration. That is a lost opportunity. So our main message is don't miss the opportunity to establish stable alveolar balance. This is not early treatment. This is timely treatment. Uh, last cases came in this summer. So right, that was the summer of 2020 and now in the summer of 2025 this is us all day every day look at the asymmetry in the arch you're not going to do a two by one right nobody does that you have no leverage anywhere but when you can get on all of these teeth with aligners you get leverage everywhere notice the lower left lateral incisor that is lingually displaced and just a year later look at the beautiful symmetry that you're getting with the teeth look at the beautiful eruption and the beautiful correction of the asymmetry that you can do when you have actual control across the arch. Look at the tooth. It's not only erupted, but the lower left lateral is almost completely in place. And so when we look at the beautiful results that we can get in this early mixed dentition, and we don't even wait for the lateral incisors, as long as we see that there's already a jumbled mess, that is our cue. We are not talking about expansion. We're not talking about functional appliances. We are simply talking about alveolar balance. We're talking about establishing and creating space. Why be resigned to lost space? Why maintain something that is insufficient? Let's create space. Let's bring these teeth into the proper arch form in order to establish stable alveolar balance when they're young so that they can benefit from that stable alveolar balance the rest of their lives. And let's try to make this world a better place. One healthy young smile at a time.